Coming up on All About Android, we welcome Leo Laporte to the show. He joins to share his thoughts on the Microsoft Surface Duo. Also, Google has announced a new hardware event uh, in just a couple of weeks, uh, confusing OnePlus Buds for Apple AirPods. Such an interesting story. LG Wing, Motorola Razr, both of those devices now official, the Razr 5G anyways, your email, and a whole lot more next on All About Android. All About Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by LegalZoom. Don't let legal questions hold you back. LegalZoom is dedicated to helping you with the right solutions. Visit LegalZoom.com today to take care of the important things you need to get done. And by Taylor Store. Taylor Store makes high quality clothing that is fully customizable by you. From the basic essentials to the most high-end details, Taylor Store has got you covered. Get 20% off plus free shipping with every purchase through October 31st at taylorstore.com slash twit and use code twit. And by Raycon. Raycon's wireless earbuds are perfect for listening to audiobooks, music, or podcasts. Go to buyraycon.com slash android and get 15% off your order. Hello and welcome to All About Android, episode 490, recorded on Tuesday, September 15th, 2020, your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason Howell. And I'm Ron Richards. And I'm Florence Ion. And today there are not three of us, there are four, at least at the top four. of the show. We welcome to the show a familiar face. It's Leo Laporte. How you doing, Leo? Hey, guys. Hello, How you Leo. Doing? Hey. Good to see Leo, you. Welcome. Welcome. I hope back. you don't mind. I went home because I, well, you're all home. Why would you mind? <laughs> this is what we do. This is just how it is I now. Was, I was in the studio at 8 a.m. We had a long day today because I guess maybe you don't know about Apple. It's a small company in Cupertino, uh, but they had some announcements. And, you know, well, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't really newsworthy, though. I didn't see anything. About I it. actually, yeah, she, God, that really was pleasant. happening today uh, until so the Twit I. newsletter reminded me. So oh, thank good. you, Twit newsletter. That I get yes. in my inbox every Monday. That's why it exists. I I completely forgot that it was even happening, and I threw out some oh, random geez. Android question on Twitter, and then I was like, "Why is nobody respond?" Oh, that's <laughs> We're right. We're busy. Nobody Literally, care. everybody is Apple right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to Actually, have you there, back. There was Leo. an interesting announcement today, and it, re it relates to Android a little bit, which is uh, Apple did a little neener neener to Intel, and I guess by extension Qualcomm and everybody else. Yeah. Uh, by talking about the fact that their new mid-range iPad is going to have a five nanometer Apple Silicon chip in it. Oh. Uh, it's going to be the fastest chip that Apple's put out, faster uh, than even the iPhone chip, current iPhone chip or the iPad Pro chip. And it's in their, you know, $500, $599 iPad. So I think what Apple's doing is getting everybody ready for the fact they're going to start making their own chips for their computers too. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. Well, and they're kind of following along on the trend that we're seeing largely right now, which Apple is, is firmly in the middle of, which is this kind of mid-range, like amazing mid-range category. Amazing, putting that in air quotes, but the mid-range yep. on, on the Apple side and on the Android side is just starting to be such an exciting category, which, you know, it used to be such kind of a bore. I was like, well, why would you they want to do that? They even announced an Apple Watch SE, the less expensive mm -hmm. Apple Watch. So they're with they're, child yeah. with digital child tethering as I now, was were you interested today. in that Florence? Yeah, I actually well, yes, I would like for my child to be tethered, but really I <laughs> like the whole idea behind it, just what I was reading behind yeah. it, which is to have one iPhone for the parent right. uh actually digitally tethered to a bunch of wearable devices doled out to the kids. So the parent so still gets iPhones. to have that digital leash. Right. Although it's it's kind of for the affluent because it's not that inexpensive and you have to get the cellular edition, which True. means there'll be a monthly True. subscription and on and on. So it's really for people who have some some money to waste. But at least it's cheaper than an iPhone. Until Google uh, comes out with its own solution for Android, uh, to add to that family say, link that they've yeah, got going on already. 
<laughs> I was, I was going to say, I still can't feel about that. I can't believe it's 2020 that this is the first time that that has all happened. I thought it would have yeah. happened sooner, to be honest with you. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's like, really? We waited this long for it? But there have been a lot of, uh, you know, bespoke, you know, GPS tags that you put in your kid's backpack and things like that. Yeah. But this really it lets you call the kid because it's got cellular on the watch. Yeah. It lets you restrict who the kid can call. It gives you GPS coordinates. The kid can send for help. It even has fall detection, uh, which I mean, I think all of this stuff is uh, is actually really smart. I wish you were about 200 bucks less because I think yeah. all in you're probably in at about 500 bucks uh, or 400 bucks plus a $10 a month um, cellular bill, but it's still, I think it's a, it's a good step. And I would love to see this in Android Wear. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. Android Wear. Huh. Remember that? Remember mm. that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Wear OS if it's, if it's ever becomes anything more than what it is right now, which is basically that nobody's really talking about it very much. That's kind of sad because honestly, I think there was an opportunity missed there. I like yeah. what Samsung's doing. I think the new Samsung gear is I nice, agree. But, I agree. You know. The whole lineup. Um, mm -hmm. And hey, for anybody who is looking for a Samsung watch, by the way, I was just looking around on Amazon today. That first gen Galaxy Watch Active, it's like under 180 bucks right now. So, and it's Not Amazon's bad. choice. So, I thought you were setting up to be like, I've got one for sale. <laughs> I have no, one. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've you got mine frontier? right here. I haven't <laughs> gone anywhere. I haven't yeah. been able who to breathe it? my air. So, I don't really care about totally. wearing a smartwatch right now. I always so, know what time it is. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs it? <laughs> Who needs a double display, a two display Android device right now when we're at home? That that's like yeah, a I'll tell you that? who does I'm multitasking. <laughs> I'll tell you who does. Anybody who owns this, I want okay. it. Whoa. Do you notice Can any notifications? <laughs> Do you notice any information on the? This is the Samsung. I'm sorry, the Microsoft <laughs> Surface Duo. <laughs> And nothing on closed, the outside. You wouldn't even know it's a phone. It, it looks could be a like Moleskine my notebook. Casio from back in the day. My little Casio PDA. Yeah. And now, if you now want I have to admit that, this, that, that that device has been one of the most hotly discussed conversations yes. with some, some yes. of my friends about yeah. not knowing whether or not they actually need it, but feeling like they want it. Mm -hmm. mm. I mm -hmm. wanted it. That's why I spent fourteen hundred. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, it's okay. You did. You know, it's it's okay. It. And, and that's been the real obstacle is that price tag. Yeah, and honestly. Given what this is, which is it's an Android device with two screens, it's like a little booklet. And it, it, there's some really neat and elegant ideas in it. It's certainly a beautiful bit of, bit of hardware. Yeah. But given what it is, the fact that there's no wireless charging, there's no NFC, it's not waterproof. Uh, without NAC, you can't support uh, Android Pay, uh, Google Pay. You can't uh, – uh, I mean, it's got the worst camera since the Essential phone. Mm. Oh, um, no. Given, Given all wow. of that, it would be pretty. You'd be pretty hard pressed to say, "Oh, I'm going to spend fourteen hundred dollars, even eight hundred dollars for this, and this could be my primary phone." I don't think it actually would work as your primary phone very well. I mean, it's not just that you get no notifications when it's closed. It's a, it, you know, what it is. It's a fetish object. It's a wonderful tech yes. fetish object, and it is mm, in that yeah. regard. I mean, when you, you you feel it, it's absolutely premium. They did a lot of uh, work, I think, to make it super thin. I actually have the bumper on it. Which you probably don't need, but I, you know, it just makes it a little bit more grippy. You spent um, fourteen hundred dollars. You got to put the bumper on it. Yeah, no kidding, because it's glass inside and out. Um, but these are Is nice. The these are LG OLED screens. These are you've seen these screens on other phones. These are re it's yep. a beautiful screen. Uh, no, nothing shabby. It's interesting. There's bezels, but there's not a you know there's not a big hinge in the middle. But you still don't yeah. think of it as a single screen. And I'll show you. I'll I'll open the Edge browser for instance. And so um, let's go to Twit just so we have a nice – I should have set this up ahead of time. Um, but so that's – you know, if you were using it as a regular phone, it would be a weird 3-2 aspect ratio. So it's Looks kind like of fat. like an Nexus 6. Yeah, it's kind of fat for a regular <laughs> phone. Short and fat. Squat. It's stocky. Yeah. Uh, that's problem mm -hmm. number one. And then, uh, by the way, when you close it like that, this goes blank. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Intentionally. Well. It's because yeah. this is the phone. And honestly, somebody on the other side would be reading your notifications otherwise, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. You don't want that. Uh, and, but then if I want to make this take two screens, I, br I bring it over. These are the gestures. I think a lot of reviewers didn't spend enough time with it to kind of get used to it. Because once you get yeah. used to it, the gestures make sense. They're not as janky as they seemed when I first uh, got it. And I've only had it since Thursday. 
Um, so now, now you see the website goes across with a slight, and then if you yep. turn it sideways, this is one problem. The accelerometer is not great, but it now, mm. it's now a longer thing. But then you have, they have this bar in the middle, right? Yeah. And that actually is yeah. obscuring stuff. It's, it's Oof. not like watch my head. Okay. See my forehead's missing. Oops. Yeah. Forehead's missing. Well, it's and not it's that actually it's the not top missing. of my head. And There's the, just a line that separates the top and the bottom and pushes no, it's the not. Look out. At it. So so your head no, is like stretched out. as a result. I don't think so. I think it's actually cutting no. it out. It's yeah, actually going to do a crossword out. puzzle yeah. if there's any characters on that. Yeah, it looks that. a little cut off. It does. Yeah. I see it. If there's yeah, any characters right. on the crossword puzzle, look, my eyes wow. will disappear. They they shouldn't disappear, right? It looks like I'm in the witness protection Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So that means that... That's a little weird. Like that was a decision Microsoft yeah. made. They could have had it be continuous with a, just a gap, but no. And there, that is a little bit of a problem because I was doing a crossword puzzle and you can't <laughs> – there's, there's pieces missing. What is the missing. thing right there? What is the yeah. one? Yeah. So that's a, that's, that's a little weird. Although – see, so it's not a fold. It's not like, oh, this is one big screen with a, with a hinge. It's close. But honestly, I don't think people are going to do this very often. What you're going to do yeah. more often – and, and by the way, the gestures, if you're used to Android, you have to get used to it. So to get back to home, you tap, you don't swipe up. Swiping up, uh, I don't know what it mm. does. It gives you other things. It gives you the most, see, it's easier just to hit the recents button and get the recents. Those are the recents. And you can swipe okay. away and stuff like that. Uh, you so have they've to, implemented their own to, gesture approach aside it, it, from what we're kind of right. used to from Android so you, 10 and 11. If you're coming from Android, it's going to be, uh-huh. Uh, and I yeah. think that's what a lot of the reviewers thought. Now, this is the Microsoft launcher. There is some nice stuff. You see if I swipe over all the way. It's kind of weird because this is the the home screens go across, right, like that. Oh, you swipe over yeah. all the way. Just like on Pixel, you have a uh, kind of a uh, all about, you know, a status board. And it's got, it says, good evening, Leo. It has the date. It'll have my calendar on there. That's another problem. Only the Microsoft apps right now are designed to work in the unique way that this phone works. And so you, if you're not living, if you're living as I'm not uh, in the Microsoft world, y I don't use Outlook for my mail. Right. Outlook works great on this because with Outlook, yeah. I'll show you real quickly. Um, when I go to a dual screen on Outlook, and again, you go dual screen by Drag, and you have to get oh, it with that's the, nice. the center. That's a nice okay. gesture. Yeah. And then now, yeah, you get used to it pretty quickly. And now when I look at mail, when I open a mail, this is the list of mail and this is the mail, the, uh, the actual email. So like that, there are yeah. some oh, uses. Oh, I love for, that. Yeah. You see, I think there's some things on this. You go, that's so cool. Here's another one. These are groups that you make. You can connect any two apps. Yeah. For yeah. Instance, this is my, my chess study Group. So I have a Kindle book <laughs> on the right here. And as I'm playing through the game, this is the best chess wallet I've ever had for $1,400. <laughs> oh, I would love that. I would have so many uses for this. The the LG uh, Velvet and the uh, LG V60 ThinQ try to do kind of do the same thing with the side-by-side right. -side right, -side app launch. Yep. But what you're showing, Leo, looks so smooth. It just it's looks really, like it's yeah. it's you know programmed exactly for that situation, and I, I it makes me want it. <laughs> there are some things less smooth. So here I've got the camera, okay. and it starts in selfie mode, and then what you do with it is you close this, and it's supposed to switch over. No, it's still in selfie mode. It's supposed to, and this is part of the problem with the software. And I think this will get better. Remember the essential phone. Yeah. Mm. basically died because when it shipped it wasn't complete and was bad but they fixed it you know over the next few months they did so this is having the same problem i'm not it's not it's supposed to go into <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah is it doing it now yeah you see me now okay yeah there you so, go there you yeah. go and now it went away <laughs> went, went back to this <laughs> <laughs> there is there's a, there are numerous situations uh, like that, and the camera is potato. The camera is terrible. That's uh, you, what I've heard. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? It's good at. It's a great little webcam. So if they had just said, like, if I launch Teams or Skype and put the webcam here, I can have a keyboard down here or other things down here. It does that. That like the flip, like the uh, Galaxy Flip. It does that arbitrary angle thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like a little Locks laptop. In. 
That's great. This is kind of like a would you ever, size laptop. Would you ever use it in this form factor with the keyboard on the bottom? Oh, I have already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how does that already. work? Because I feel like yeah. that's one of those use cases that seems like it would make a lot of sense. But then when you do it, you'd be like, actually, I don't ever want to do that again. I don't know. How did it work for you? If it worked, like if it were more responsive. So, for instance, I've got a note taking app on the right. And then this is my Kindle app, which is launching. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is my Audible app which is launching very slowly. So the theory would be, oh, you're listening to a book or you're reading a book and you're taking notes on the other side. But watch what happens when I go into typing keyboard mode, if it goes into keyboard mode. Now, what's the easy, when you're holding it like this, what's the easy way to type? There isn't one. Yeah, right. Right? Right. So that's kind of a, a disadvantage. In theory, if I make this dual screen, let's see if it happens. Um, and then I've got a keyboard. If I go like this, Come on. Come on, software. Uh, maybe you, you can, can do, do it. it. I know you can do it. In theory, you shake the keyboard it. would occupy this bottom part. <laughs> shake it and a little and bit. And it's like an etch a sketch. It's like an etch a sketch, and then it reveals a, a keyboard in the lower screen yeah. when you're done, right? Yeah. So a lot of reviewers dinged it because uh it, it would get unresponsive at times. Yeah. I think that's actually an application issue. I think applications are somewhat baffled by this. And I think those will be fixed over time. Uh, it's a little weirdly non-responsive. I think a lot of the problems people have is that it's not standard Android gestures. You have to learn a new set of gestures in some cases. It's also there's some weird things like when I swipe down notifications, that it's just this little thin column here. They, mm -hmm. they, they, don't, they don't use the space very well. I wish they were. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. It feels like they could do more with that. Um, it that, seems I, like I, I an, suspect, it's. It feels like it's like older generation Android tablet yeah. tech, you know, in terms of how it's approaching it the OS and all the different yeah. kind of ways you can turn a device around. It feels like cool not stuff. as up, up to date as wh where we are with Android. Watch the dock as I as I swipe this over. I don't know if you can see it, but as I swipe oh, wow. it over, the dock will compress. Look at that. Mm -hmm. And then spreads out. Kind of switches over. Now, that's over. cool, except that when it's spread out, which is the default mode, it feels like there's a lot of space. I could put some other stuff there, but you can't because <laughs> right. it has to have room to compress. It's little things like that. And what I think yeah. what, what will happen is this is beautiful. Look, the hardware is amazing. And I understand why Microsoft put it out because they were so proud of it. I mm -hmm. think they probably figure they, – they must know about some of these issues. In fact, uh, the early reviewers got pre-production models which in which the issues were much worse Um mm -hmm. Immediately, as soon as you open the box, you'll get a, a large download, and that updates it quite a bit. I do think there's some things they do well. That's the fingerprint sensor. It's not on the on-off switch. It's completely separate. But it's fast, and it works well. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's not on screen, which, frankly, I have to say, I'm kind of appreciating. No, no face ID Agreed. in this. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard not to love it because the hardware is beautiful. I'll probably keep using it. I think the only way to review it is to make it your main phone. But I think you'd be disappointed for a while anyway. But I think you'd be disappointed if this were your only phone. It'd be like, yeah. Yep. It's a great how do you actually. Wall. How do you actually use it as a phone, by the way? Not to yeah, ask a stupid, yeah. ignorant question, but like, are you literally phone? holding up half that thing to your ear like a phone? Yeah. Like a, like yeah, a joke? Exactly. So if the oh. phone rings, uh, you flip it around. And you do this. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Um, that, yeah, yeah. Um. Hello. <laughs> but I think it does the trick. Nowadays, <laughs> first of all, how important is the phone in your phone? Yeah. Yeah, right. Hey, except, this isn't except a phone. For, it's a little computer. In fact, that's what I was going to say, that they shouldn't treat the camera as a camera. They should say it's a webcam. This works mm -hmm. fine for Teams or Skype or it's, it's fine. Or, or Duo. Uh, it works great. No and I think that. Duo. It's not a phone that you're going to hold to your head, even though the, Microsoft shows this in their in their advertising. Because you because this, do you still hold a phone to your head? Don't you have earbuds? I, I yeah, want to exactly, say right? I, like I usually I say depends I on the person yeah. that I'm talking I use, to. <laughs> I, I yeah, if it's a quick to, phone call, oh, that's okay. That's I tend bad. to do this. I tend to do this more often than not, even with my Pixel Buds. By the time I get my Pixel Buds in exactly. and paired right. and all this sort of right. stuff, it's right. just exactly. easier to pick up the phone. Yeah. Well, I, well I, you know, I just don't pick up the phone. If if I'm I ever making a call, then no, I make that decision. But I really <laughs> rarely ever answer the phone if a, if a ring is coming through. You know. And if I'm going to make a call, I actually put in earbuds because I don't want to yeah. hold any phone to my head. Yeah. Right. Uh, Microsoft, <laughs> it should be pointed out with their Surface Buds. 
emphasizes that you would leave them in all day. They're so comfortable, you will oh, never right. take them out. And I think they expect people to wear their Surface Buds. I might buy some no. Surface Buds just to... Mm. No one's going to yeah. do that. No. No one's going to wear their headphones the entire day. That's <laughs> that's ridiculous. Yeah. I don't care how comfortable they are. Yeah. Well, the Surface Buds are designed... I don't know, those AirPods. Those AirPods seem to become, you know, little accessories. Yeah, a lot of people. So. Lost people so. You wonder, so. are you listening to music? What are you doing? So I don't, so Leo, I don't want to pan it because I I think it's beautiful. It's and it's exciting. How often do we get something? That, totally. This yeah. is beautiful in a way. Honestly, the fold is not. I think that okay. I, I I don't think a folding screen is. is I think that's not going to survive. That's a silly idea. Dual screen makes a lot of sense. Um. So in this sense, we understand two screens. These are these are quality screens. We don't have to do any weird stuff. We don't have to cover the plastic with glass and then cover the glass with plastic to make it kind of feel like it's okay. This is real glass. It's nice. But I so I think that there this form factor has a future in some way. But what should you buy this? Absolutely not. You'd have to be nuts. Unless I mean, you're a chess just, player with a lot of disposable income. Or you like you said one earlier, of those, one like of those cases said, where a, a Gen 2 like is something that you would really yeah, look out for. Like two. They got yeah. the design right, yeah. at least. But the software, and not just, like I think what surprises me is we've been hearing for the last however many years and experiencing how good Microsoft has been when it comes to Android software. They've actually done really well uh, bringing their apps over to Android and making compelling apps. So I find it surprising that the software experience on this would be so bad. And it's not just the OS, which I think is a large part of the problem, but it also seems to be like, and eh, Microsoft's you know, uh, software design for, of their own applications are hit or miss as well. And they need to figure that out. Do you think they're going to figure that out by Gen 2? Uh, yeah. I mean, first of all, remember, this is the, the very first time Microsoft has been an OEM for somebody else's operating system. Yeah. Historically, yeah. manufacturers use Windows for their hardware. Yep. Microsoft is selling mm -hmm. somebody else's hardware, which is, I mean, operating system on their hardware. It's a complete turnaround. Totally. I think they've done pretty well. But remember, all of those apps, you're talking about apps, not operating system. And they did have to customize this uh, quite a bit to make it work on this form factor. You know, it's actually a great little – on the airplane, you'd be very happy to have this. Mm -hmm. It's a great little TV. It, if I make it full screen, you'll see – oh, see, there's that silly <laughs> accelerometer. But you prop that on your tray table – you yeah. could even have Twitter going here or something else going in the in the bottom part or a keyboard. And now you're you're watching the game. Nice. That's and it's and the screen is good. I watched a, a whole football game during Twit. Shh. Uh, <laughs> we won't tell anyone. It was for research. The Niners were playing. So <laughs> you do what you it, gotta it, do. Yeah, you can do what you no, it it actually so that in the, it does have a picture in picture like all Android devices. Yeah. So I mean I I there's things I love about it. I I I kind of don't want to stop using it. I did buy it, so I guess I have to. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think you'd want this as your only phone. You, I cannot possibly yeah. tell anybody, oh, this is a must-buy. It's too expensive yeah. and doesn't quite work well enough. Well, but it's and a and good it's like start. And it's like yeah. you said earlier that it's a fetish object, right? So if that is yeah. what yeah. you – what if you if you have $1,500 and that you're into that sort of fetishes, then cool. Yeah. Go go to town. Yeah. Have fun. And, and, yeah. and you can watch video on the plane and that sort of thing. But yeah. to me, it seems like there's a lot of kinks to work out on the software side. And the, I would be looking at the next the you know, the next version of it before it's a viable device. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, in no way you'd want it as your primary phone. So you have to have enough disposable income that this is your second phone. Oh, by the way, battery life is great. I don't know how they did it. It's like a 3,500 milliamp hour battery, but it's great. Lasts all day. Oh, wow. No do yeah, you have, do you have to do use, that do you have to use it as a phone, though? Could you just use it on Wi-Fi and use it as a, as a, yeah. as a tablet device? Totally. Right? In fact, Microsoft's yeah. been very clear. It's not a phone, except you can answer calls and yeah. make calls on it, but it's not a phone. <laughs> it's not I a mean, phone there's first. a reason they say that, right? They, don't, they want you to think of it as a... a a little computer. You know what's interesting? A, There's going to be, a, and it might be as much as a year off, Microsoft's delayed it, but a larger, almost identical to this version running Windows 10X, a new version of Windows. That And it has a keyboard, which right. is on the back. When you open it up, you can slide it on top of this. That's going to be very interesting. Hmm. So this is a form factor Microsoft's all in on. I hope that Disappointing sales, which are inevitable for this after all those bad reviews. I hope the disappointing sales don't discourage Microsoft from doing more with this because it's a very interesting platform. 
I would be surprised if this if if they were one and done on this. I think I especially agree. because foldables just in general is a category that I think I imagine all OEMs understand we're not going to get it right the first time because this is so right. different than what we have been. So we have to be okay with the longer game on this. And Microsoft has done a lot of things right here. Uh, but there's obvious areas of improvement, and I think they're going to figure that out, at, at least get closer to that in, in Gen 2. Exactly right. Yes. Yeah. 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 And if you if cool. you want, you can you can borrow this. And, okay. And well, I haven't had any any hands-on time with any foldable at this point. Not the Razer, not the Galaxy Fold. Yeah. So this is your this is your first full of the major foldables. Does this make you um, – does this get you more interested in kind of some of the other foldables? Or are you kind of like, oh, actually. I'm I really so wanted sure. the flip because I yeah. thought, oh, that's interesting. I don't want the fold because I just think that crease down the middle, I just, I, it's yeah. too janky. Um, yeah. I'll have to look at what LG's doing. That new wing is weird. <laughs> the wing, yes. yes. It's so odd. really weird. But I, I love the oddity of it. I want more odd devices. That's a, and going back to what you're saying, like, it's a that form factor is not something that we have seen, and I want to see different form factors coming yeah. up in the Android space because I'm tired of the same chocolate bar, you know, rectangular yeah. phone, you know, like the same thing that we're yeah. used to. So yeah, yeah. this yeah. is so boring, yeah. and and so and maybe that's one problem because we're a little jaded. So when we jump on this in a way that normal people wouldn't, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how is the fold selling? How is the flip selling? Do we know? I don't know. Don't really. I haven't seen any exact numbers. I mean, I, I do know that reviewers were very positive on the changes that were made in the Z Fold and the Z Fold 2. You'll so get there's the same that. thing with the Duo 2 because people will go, oh, it's so bad. Oh, but it's good now. And it's right. still, I don't think, look at the Fold. That is yeah. a clunky piece of kit. It's <laughs> ugly ass. I don't know. I wanted it, I wanted it in person to, to make sure and, and see. When you um, see this, this is thinner this is 10 millimeters with it folded yeah. up and five millimeters each on the side. This thing yeah, is so I elegant. Really want and it's it. perfectly balanced, by the it. way. They took great pains to make each side equal in weight. I, I don't think I should balance it on my finger. Whoa! Oh. No, 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 don't do it. <laughs> but it's perfectly balanced. It is, it, and the hinge feels good. It's really a nice, uh, elegant design, I think. I've nice. I've kind of marred it by putting that bumper on it. That probably should take. I was going to say the bumper kind of throws off a little bit of the elegance, yeah. just a little bit. But you know, All you right. want longevity out of this device because exactly. you're going to be using it, Leo, for at least five or six years. So you <laughs> want to last. And when you spend that money, you need to protect your investment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is going to be an expensive month. There's a new Apple Watch, new iPhone, new iPad, and then at the end of the year, they're going to give us new Macs. I don't know. I, I let Jason buy the all the Samsung stuff this year. Well, Other Samsung new Googly things. And oh, and maybe on the thirtieth, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe <laughs> I'll have to buy uh, something else from Google. Yeah. So I'm taking yeah. the bumper off. You convinced me. Oh, okay. It well, it has an I adhesive. Just don't drop it. Okay, I wondered if it was like, well, what's it's on? I'm not going to drop it. it. Now, how do you, now how much would you pay? Ah, now that's. Isn't that pretty? That's nice. That's so thin. So yeah, one reviewer good. said, the edges on the glass are so sharp. What it? <laughs> what are you, three? No, you're not going to cut yours. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's, it's okay. <laughs> right on. I Leo, thank you so much for amazing. hopping on with us. Oh, yeah. I really, uh, actually enjoy talking about this because I, I feel like it's very interesting. It's just not quite cooked yet. Remember, I loved yep. the Essential Phone when that came out. Mm. That was a, I was wrong about that. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think we, we all did. We were all wooed no. We by love. That one. The, yeah. I'll, I'll amend that. We love the idea of the Essential Phone. Yeah. And then we yes. got our hands on it. and We're like, oh, right. they sold us on a concept and an idea that they didn't quite deliver yep. on. Um, yeah. This is very love, similar. Yeah, I love the I love the I love the bold idea that Microsoft is attempting with this. Right. Yeah. And to be fair, I feel bad. Uh, because the essential phone got better. They fixed the camera. Mm -hmm. They fixed a lot of things. They never put out those modules, but they fixed a lot of stuff. And it was actually a pretty decent phone by the end. Yeah. Um, but, you know, this could easily, a lot of what's wrong with this could be fixed in software. There is only one speaker, there's no NFC, there's no wireless charging. It's oh, not yeah, waterproof. Right. That you can't fix. But I think uh, some of the glitches, the jankiness, I think you, and you think you can make this more elegant in software. It is an 855, it's last year's uh, Qualcomm Snapdragon. I don't yep. find that. I mean, we didn't hate it last year. What's what? No. I, this, 
Android spec. Maybe they so shouldn't market it as a phone. Maybe the, the phone, I think, really is the wrong category to push these things. And I feel like Microsoft, knowing Microsoft's history, they probably do have some sort of trajectory to tie in with what they're doing with their apps right. and the plans that they have. But yeah, yeah, marketing yeah, it to us as a phone, it's going to get compared as a phone. And if it gets compared as a phone, it's not going to do right. so well. Right. <laughs> Right. Well, Leo, you, my we appreciate you carving out some time yeah, on, uh, thank on you. A Tuesday night to join thank us you. for the late edition of All About Android. It's thank only you my so much fifth for show of the day. I, I, I'm okay. I'm good. I could do another <laughs> three or four. I'm ready. I don't, Put I, me in, Coach. I, I feel bad. You need to go <laughs> no, no, and relax bad. and have your I'm evening. home. What, what, exactly. come, there's a burrito waiting for me in the other room, and I'm not wearing any pants. What more could you ask for? <laughs> <laughs> this is just the world we live in in the Zoom. No, in the nobody's Zoom wearing world. pants here. We're just we're just doing what we can. <laughs> yeah, that's nothing new on this show. Thank you, Leo. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thank you. Have a good appreciate one. you. Take we'll, care. we'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye. -bye. Bye. Take care, Leo. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, that was fun. Uh, Ron, you got the ad. I do. All right. So we want to thank LegalZoom for sponsoring this episode of All About Android. Um, and listen, as we adjust to this, the, the new normal around us, it's important that we have proven solutions to help us overcome those unique challenges that we're facing and going to be facing. You never know what's around the corner. Uh, so if you need legal help for your challenges, LegalZoom has proven to be a reliable resource for families and business owners everywhere during these unprecedented times. LegalZoom has been dedicated to helping you with the right solutions for more than 19 years. They're established. They've been around. You can trust them. Whether you need a will or a living trust to protect your family or if you, you need help starting a business the right way with a DBA, LLC, nonprofit, or anything else like that, LegalZoom can help you do it. It's easy to get started online, and if you need guidance, their network of attorneys can provide legal advice to ensure you're making the right choices. And the best thing of all is that since LegalZoom isn't a law firm, you won't have to leave your home and you won't get charged by the hour. Lord knows legal advice is expensive. I've been there. I've started several small businesses on my own and with friends, had no idea what I was doing, paid the price for it with lengthy, lengthy legal bills. Um, I recently had a friend of mine who was starting a new company and they came to me and said, you've done it before. What, you know, what, you know, what, what mistakes did you make? What, you know, what can I do? And the first thing I said was go to LegalZoom use that as a resource to get all your documents in place, get all your registrations in place, do it right the first time. Don't make the mistakes I did over the past uh, 15 years with my LLCs and things like that. LegalZoom is a great resource to have and makes uh, answering those tough questions a little easier uh, with their expertise. So this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna visit LegalZoom.com today and take care of some of the important things you need to get done. That's LegalZoom.com. And we thank LegalZoom for their support and sponsoring this episode of All About Android. LegalZoom. Thanks. Thanks. Legal Thank Zoom. you, LegalZoom. And now, you know, we've got all of our show uh, components kind of in mishmash in different order because of the, the top of the show uh, look at the Surface Duo. So now, Burke, it's time for the news. We just saw both sides of the duo. Now let's see the inside. Ooh. Of the duo? Or inside the rest of Android news that's out there, because I think that's what we're going to do. Flo, you got the, yep. the top story. This is this is the top story, and exactly what we need to take us through these ever present. Uh, unprecedented times. So the next Google hardware event officially has a date. Everyone mark your calendars, go to your Google calendar right now. And I want you to put in Wednesday, September 30th, 2020 at 11 a.m. Pacific. That's right. If you're on the West Coast, you don't have to get up super early. Uh, cough, Samsung events, cough, cough. That's right. Uh, <laughs> now Google sent out a very warm email to us folks <laughs> they are inviting to come watch this live stream uh, saying the following. We invite you to learn all about our new Chromecast, our latest smart speaker, and our new Pixel phones, which we may or may not have leaked all over already, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, so we are expecting the Pixel 4a 5G, the Pixel 5, likely a new Nest smart speaker, uh, which, by the way, if you've been reading around the rumor mill, there's a lot of stuff going on over there, you know? 
Also, uh, the Sabrina dongle that we've discussed. And no, we're not talking about that 90s film with Harrison Ford. We're talking about the dongle that goes into your TV that people have been talking about since, again, lots of leaks. That's all we've Fasc- got to hold on to in these days. I'm fascinated that you go to the 90s Harrison Ford rom-com and not the Teenage Witch. <laughs> I know. Considering <laughs> I, I also just posted the Teenage Witch on my Instagram recently. <sighs> And I would have uh, thought Britney. that that Sabrina the Teenage Witch was right in your wheelhouse and growing up in the 90s and all that fun stuff or it 2000s, was. whatever you grew up, whatever. It was, oh. but I also spent a lot of time at the, you know, at the video store oh, waiting for I my parents to get something. I enjoy that Harrison Ford film. That's, that, that's, a great, <laughs> that's a great remake of an Audrey Hepburn film, but uh, yeah, no, it's fantastic. Um, I had to Google uh, that one, and then once I saw the poster, I was like, oh, oh yeah. The, oh, the, yeah, I remember that. that. Julia, Julia Ormond, right? Wasn't she the woman, I believe, if I correct the lead? Yeah. Uh, so sometimes yes. I like Julia TVs Arlen. and yes. just see what Ron like gleams from what I'm saying. I'm pretty I sure I, I saw. Sub- I'm pretty sure I saw that film in the theaters. By the way, too. Um, <laughs> it's it's on Pluto TV. Fans. If anybody wants to watch it, by the way, it's streaming there. Yeah. Just yeah. FYI. Yeah. Uh, Jose Pontoon on Twitter posted photos of a Pixel 5s dog food device. Uh, now we're wondering if that's the five in some like other sort of capacity or if it's a completely different device. I don't know. It's confusing because it says in the about phone, it says pixel five S and that just makes me think of Apple's name. Maybe it means uh, pixel fives. Like, Oh, like there's many of them. (laughs) There's a lot of them. (laughs) Yes. There's, there's a lot of of that. That's a good point. Personalities type of phone. (laughs) And it's our job to help it find its journey. (laughs) Um, Moving on from the phone course we were also talking about the sabrina dongle earlier so that's likely to be called the here we go google chromecast with google tv oh jeez mm. uh, they just very can. long name very long they name uh, such a long name you can't fill out a whole sat form with it that's how long they the really enjoy out. getting google in the name because they did it twice on that one <laughs> yes the google chromecast by google with google tv <sighs> Made a PS Google, view at Google. Google headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the rebranding, of course, of Android TV that we've been hearing about. Remember, Android TV was branded over from Google TV before, and now we're going back to Google TV. So we were talking about identity crisis with the Pixel yeah. 5s. We are also having an identity crisis with whatever this Chromecast dongle is supposed to be called and whatever Android TV is supposed to be called going forward. Uh, at least we have a remote to look forward to, finally. Yeah. Yeah, at least there's that. Um, I, I do think right. I do think I li- I like this confirmation. I like Google leaning into like we're just going to tell you what we're talking about. Yeah. There's yeah, like no, no more no more that like the, the way things leak and renders and all this sort of stuff. Like no, we're going to we're you know like it's going to be Chromecast and it's going to be the smart speaker and it's going to be Pixel 5 and and sure that that there probably will be a surprise. Like there probably will be something that, that they didn't tell us about, but I feel like they're setting expectations to the point where us as journalists and you as fans and everybody else can do it, can prepare and and expect to right. be like, okay, this is what the conversation is going to be around. Um, you know, I'm, I'm look forward to something that I don't know about. I look forward to something surprising, but taking the mystery out of the event. And, and honestly, this is not like Sam, I feel like Samsung has also done this, you know, like they're, they're all telegraphing what they're talking about. And it's less about, it's less about how the movie ends and more about how you got to that point, you know? Mm. 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 Yeah. I think it's also worth bringing up the fact that, uh, you know, Google's doing something a little cheeky with this event. So for the press that they normally, I assume would have invited to an event somewhere physically, they are sending little like care packages so that we can watch the event in utmost comfort. So I will be reporting on when that care package arrives and what's in it. They gave us choices. So everybody's getting a different medley of things in their care package. Mm. So we shall see what arrives. Uh, And I I guess I've got to find a good like at home outfit now to watch this in because I, I feel like they really want us to socialize. What says launch? Launch night in is what it says on the invite. Yes. So kind of get your popcorn ready, put on some snuggy pajamas, and uh, I don't know. I don't I'm not know. Not wearing what that anything means, else actually. but snuggy pajamas, and you know <laughs> my 
my Nano 2 and 0 <sighs> socks with holes in them because I've had them for so long and right? I keep sewing them. So hey, listen, once wearing. your socks have holes, you throw them away. That's just the rule. Yeah. Not if they're That's Nano the... 2 and 0 socks that you happen to have found at Kohl's like a long time ago in the early 2000s. Jason. I have a hard time. I have a hard time with that rule too. I have a bunch of really, really cool Disney World socks that got holes, See? and I, I don't want to part See? with them. And so, yeah, oh, I can't. I can't stand yeah. wearing socks. Yeah, with Jason, holes. same here. Okay, fine. Apparently, I'm in the. I'm. I'm the only one here that throws away socks with holes. Reduce, in them. reuse, recycle, Jason. <laughs> Come on now. Oh, <laughs> uh, I, I do like that. I do appreciate that on the invite, they have a little asterisk down there next to 11 a.m. Pacific. And it says, yeah, it's happening during the day. But what is time anyway? Which it's you true. Know, it's true. We, we have in this <laughs> in this world at this point, you know, and I appreciate that, that Google just kind of came out and say, you know what? We're all living in this hell together. Why don't you come <laughs> watch the show? So we might as well watch a device <laughs> announcement together. Uh, I'm going to have to hit up Google for a little bit of that care package action. That sounds awesome. Uh, so Pixel 5, are we excited about the 4A, 5G, and the 5? I guess we don't really know much about it, but we're about to find out. And does it feel too soon? Wait, is that like a joke just... that we don't know much about it? Well, I mean... We don't know it officially. We know Google's Fair. word is that, yes, they exist. And then we have a bunch of rumors around specs and everything. So I guess we don't Fair. know for certain, but we think we know. But I, I guess my question more is with, prior to uh, the 4A being announced officially, we were hearing about the the possibility of the 4A and then a couple of months later, the 4A, 5G, and then the 5. And going, whoa, that's too soon. Like, that's a really weird cadence. Um, does it feel that way now? Like, have we, has like our time being fascinated with the 4A burned off and now we're like ready for the next thing? Nah. Not for me because I haven't got my 4A yet. So <laughs> that's true. <laughs> okay. Good yeah. point. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm excited to see. I think it'll still be interesting to see how they differentiate between the three and whether it actually makes sense that the five is a five and not a variant of the 4A or, or whatever the case may be there. I'm not really quite sure. I bet you. I I bet you, I bet you whatever's in my care package that they are going to use 5G as a uh, kind of a crux to introduce either a new carrier partner or to just like really hone in that carrier partner because 5G is something that is really, you know, the torch is really being carried by the carrier. So I imagine mm -hmm this phone is going to have that sort of appeal. And then the other two phones will kind of be like, these are the unlocked variants that you can get. Like, that's what I'm, that's what I'm imagining. Hmm. hmm. Or there really is a 5S and the 5S is like the new, uh, what would have been the 5A. Does that make sense? Wait, wasn't there an <laughs> now iPhone it's getting really 5S? Confusing. <laughs> Sorry. What's that? Wasn't there an iPhone 5S? I feel like they can't do an S. I feel like that's not allowed. I don't know. I'm. Uh, there is an iPhone 5S. Yes, I don't know. I don't know whether they're allowed to do that or not. I mean, it said in the about phone 5S there. That's that. It's just confusing. Why? Why wouldn't they be allowed to? I mean, they can do whatever they want, right? I mean, it's true, but it's like it's like girl code, you know. Like it's not like written anywhere, but you just kind oh. of have it in the back of your mind. Like it's kind of uncouth to do that. You don't you know? do that. That yeah. belongs to Apple. I don't think yeah, I think that's don't a reason go there, to Google. I think that's a I think that's a reason to do it. <laughs> right. Maybe that's the reason that Google is does that, do it. Is that is that is that boy code or is that I don't know what but like I think I don't know. Why not why not introduce some There is a the bro code. Yes, yeah. by the way. Yeah. There's bro, code. <laughs> bro code. There we go. That's the term. Uh, this next story is very interesting and funny and still a total head scratcher. Um, yep. And I'm not quite sure that it qualifies, Ron, as a OnePlus blunder. Because I don't I'm think not, it does. Not, it's not really like OnePlus made it's a It's not mistake. really their fault. <laughs> I, I, I feel like OnePlus is the victim here, and I think it's more yeah. of a federal government blunder. Which we, Although you know, maybe the federal government thinks it's a OnePlus blunder, like, hey, you shouldn't have done that. Anyways, what am I talking about? The U.S. Custom and Border Protection tweeted out a series of photos and a tweet that said they recently seized 2,000 counterfeit Apple AirPods from Hong Kong, valued at $398,000 had they been genuine, had these not been 
been some sort of like non genuine ripoff of, of AirPods. They, like I said, they included photos of the hall, and the photos totally like show boxes of OnePlus buds, <laughs> which, yes, <laughs> do look a lot like AirPods, but that's many amazing. Ear, earbuds do this, have that same. So does everything else on factor. AliExpress. That probably made yeah. it through customs. Well, maybe that's part of the reason why. Maybe that's part of this this whole deal. Um, so, in other words, this is legitimate hardware. OnePlus has, you know, it's not like OnePlus is like trying to get away with something here. They've they've had events. They've been selling them uh, legitimately through stores and everything like that. They're not counterfeit or anything. The CBP followed up a day later, stating that the earbuds violate Apple's quote configuration trademark for AirPods. Now, Apple has not been involved at all in this, by the way. They haven't made any sort of a legal case against OnePlus. CBP seems to be operating on its own as far as this is concerned, from my understanding. They stated it didn't matter what the boxes said. Uh, so the fact wow. that they actually had, like, the manufacturer and and all the information. And, like, there, and they, like you have to have, like, registration stuff in there and, like, yeah, right. testing and, like, approvals and all that stuff has to go totally. through that. This is, this is bonkers. It's, so they kind of didn't care. They said, quote, a company does not have to put an Apple word mark or design on their products to violate these trademarks. Um, just interesting to see where this is going to go, uh, considering this is like a for sale product that I don't know. Apple didn't seem to have a problem with it. If they had, they probably would have done something. But maybe that's not how you legislate this sort of thing. Maybe maybe the CBP does have the authority to make this decision. Uh, I don't know. And how many how many knockoff how many knockoff buds pro wh whatever they're called the earbuds yeah air, air, whatever AirPods how many earbuds, of them have whatever. come through. In the last couple of years, you're telling me this is the first time that they like picked. The, oh, no, this company is like trying to. No, this is this is weird. There's something going yeah. on here that I don't like. It is weird. Very I, I, weird. It seems like it's stupidity. That's what I it agree. Seems like. Yeah. And I don't like it. Uh, fair. I, I think know. one plus <laughs> one plus and, and I'm glad one plus I will give one plus points for responding on social media and having uh, a, a a good retort about it and turning it into a positive for, uh, for their brand. I will give them credit for that. So cheers, one plus. That's true. So. They they did address it. What did they say? Hey, give those back. Uh, Upside down, today, smiley face, music. which is what you yeah, post when yeah. you're trying to make a joke. Have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I suppose this could be a larger political play. You know, to to say you know a lot of Chinese. Listen, brands I'm not are, saying explicitly. But it probably is something going on. I mean, I mean, it, it, wow. I don't see like I think that there's there's enough to look at to at least have that suspicion that that it's a political play. OnePlus is a Chinese company. There are other Chinese brands. Yes, but they're based in targeted. Taiwan, which is which is why it makes me, you know. Uh, oh, such a mess. It's just such a mess. Things it used to is. Be so it's much super easier. messy. I don't even know uh, how to report on this without getting messy about it. And I, you know, I, know. I don't want to be a person that brings conspiracy theories into the fold. I don't want that associated with me. But at the same time, with everything that's been and happening yeah, here we are. In the last couple of years, folks. No. Yeah. What, what this can is, I this is firmly in the category of we'll wait and see how this develops because yeah, we, we could we could this, come up with a million yeah. different reasons why this may have happened and the truth is we don't know. So well, you know, uh, we'll follow something. it and we'll see where it lands. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, in non conspiracy theory news, uh we got Android eleven, which is great. You know, people enjoying it. I still haven't gotten it on my OnePlus, by the way. No, okay, like, okay, so we can talk about that real quick if you like. Yeah, let's um, do it. Why not? It, it, it is not a – I got this wrong on the last episode. It is not a day one release of, of Android 11. It is day one accessibility to the beta. The, their their um, – what is it? Uh, Oxygen OS 11 with Android 11, you get day one access to their beta. So if you want Android 11 on your OnePlus device that you have, Ron, you can get it. You just have to opt into the beta. Right, and so I that, got that includes the new version of Oxygen, which is all samsung -y. Yes. 
which yes. is what I don't want, which is why I ordered the Pixel 4a. So, well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, well, anyway, so we got Android 11, and uh, sure enough, now there's Android 11 Go Edition. Um, as usual, this is aimed at budget devices, uh, but they broaden the support now with Android 11 Go. Um, and now supports 2 gig of RAM, up from 1.5 gig of RAM, uh, which makes room for three to four more apps in the background. Um, also, an additional 900 meg of free storage space. Uh, it launches apps 20% faster than Android Go 10, um, adds gesture navigation, and includes Android 11 features like conversations and notifications, one-time permissions, permissions auto reset, and it begins to roll out next month. So uh, Google, you know, they're 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 keeping track of both sides of the marketplace, the established and the developing. So uh, Android Go 11 uh, or Android 11 Go uh, will be coming out soon uh, within the month. So there it is. There you go. There it is. Nice. Nice to know. And they boosted, you know, more devices are going to qualify with that two gig of RAM uh, support limit. So um, I still don't know that I've really spent a much time, if at all, like I couldn't name the device that I've used uh, that runs Android Go. I wonder how, like, I don't know how very developing it is. world. It's a very developing world focused uh, yeah, platform. Oh yeah. I think that's why it's so hard to find here because uh, i just yeah. think of android one android one is the one that you can get through like project Fi and a couple other channels mm -hmm. so this one's very mm -hmm. i mean two gigabytes that's so oh, old school right well and prior to this one and a half gigs like yeah i totally. mean that yeah. was even, even more old to school yeah, yeah yeah totally so but good that google is actually paying attention because there's i mean the, you know, as we talk about all the time, there's just so many different types of devices out there. If you had to limit uh, OEMs on very low end devices to Android 11 or, you know, to the regular version of Android, like it just wouldn't run like that. I don't know what the solution would be in that case. So at least this gives a device uh, purportedly anyways that can perform on those low specs. So yep. good stuff. All right. Let's take a break and thank the sponsor. And then we've got some hardware and some app news to round things out before we get to the emails. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Taylor Store. I happen to be wearing some Taylor Store right now. Taylor Store makes it possible to get high quality made to order clothing uh, for both men and women from the comfort of your own home. And will make sure that your clothes fit you to a T. Now, I'm a tall person guy. I'm tall, slender guy. It is not easy for me to find clothes that fit me. Usually if I'm going, you know, with, with sizes that are in the store and even sometimes like, like picking a size that's supposed to, to be made to fit or whatever. Like I've had issues. I've got one arm that's longer than the other because of a shoulder injury. My arms are just super long. I've got so many like hurdles to jump through, but, um, Taylor store does all this online. Like distance, it's distance fitting essentially, and it works so well. Their Size Me app revolutionizes the measurement process, uh, uses advanced technology and algorithms. So if you're pressed for time and you can't use the app, you just try their quick size option, and that lets you create a measurement profile in just a few simple steps without having to opt out. Uh, you enter your height, you enter your weight, their algorithm will actually create your measurement profile. And then of course, if you wanna create your own measurement profile, you can totally go in there and piece by piece do your measurements, have someone help you to make sure you get it right. You can go whichever direction that you want, but it's pretty awesome that they offer that. Taylor Store allows you the unique opportunity to fully customize a range of options of items. They have a wide variety of fabrics, the option to, to alter thread color, buttons, contrast fabrics, embroidery, and more. You can get super creative because with a lot of their clothes, you can build it. It's like they give you the, it's like building a Lego uh, set, but it's your clothes and they actually fit you really well. It's pretty cool. So you can create your own design specifically specifically tailored to your style and fit. Uh, Taylor Store helps you express yourself however you please to bring out the best you, the best version of you. They have uh, totally expanded their purchase options. So some items can even be purchased without the need for measurements. So you can customize dress shirts, chinos, uh, awesome suits, polo shirts, shorts. They're rated 4.7 out of five stars by thousands of customers on Trustpilot. 
One customer, Darnell, actually says, I am extremely picky about how my dress shirts should fit. I've always had a hard time finding shirts that actually fit my body type. This sounds familiar. Uh, then I found Taylor's store. I had my doubts, but I decided to try it out anyway, and, I, and the experience was fluid and easy. I enjoyed customizing my shirt. I got my measurements done through the app. The fabric feels different from all the others I've worn, and the collar is actually sturdy. Yeah, this collar is really sturdy. Uh, finally, the fit was spot on. I honestly had a hard time believing that an app got my measurements down to the T. Taylor store can have all the money in my wallet, says Darnell. Uh, if something doesn't fit quite right, returns aren't needed. This is actually really cool about Taylor store. You just donate the shirt or the piece of clothing, the item that you got. You can just like donate it to charity or maybe you have a friend that fits, uh, fits it better than you. Taylor store will actually send you a new item and, uh, you know, that fits you best. They kind of work on what the correction is and you can do whatever you want with the item that you got the first time. They don't ask you to send it back. Pretty sweet. Like their clothing, their customer service team is impeccable. Uh, and like I said, I love Taylor store. I have a blazer. I have this shirt. I have another uh, blue shirt in there. I'm looking really good. Thanks to Taylor store. Now I just need events to dress up to, uh, to go to and uh, show them off. And that's why I'm wearing it here on all about Android from the comfort of your own home, design clothes that look beautiful and fit you perfectly with Taylor store, get 20% off plus free shipping and every purchase through October 31st at taylorstore.com slash twit and make sure and use code twit. That's taylorstore.com slash twit with the offer code twit. Experience the unrivaled fit and comfort of Taylor Store. Sorry, this is what they usually do, right? They, although I don't have the, uh, the cuff link, but if I did, I'd be putting it in right now at this very point. Experience the unrivaled fit and comfort of Taylor Store's handpicked fabrics for yourself. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you, Taylor Store, uh, for your support of All About Android. All right. We've got a couple of very interesting uh, foldable-ish uh, devices in hardware. I, I do enjoy the fact that we're getting wacky with things, as we talked about earlier with Leo. Mm -hmm. And uh, yep. as mentioned, the LG Wing is the leader in the wacky uh, department <laughs> these days. Uh, and we're happy to report that the LG Wing is officially a real thing in the world that exists. Uh, LG, LG announced the device at an event yesterday. Um, and the LG Wing is a smartphone with a swiveling display and gimbal ca camera. Um, it's part of the new LG Explorer project, uh, and they said both an initiative and a category and will include devices that deliver distinctive and yet unexplored usability experiences. And I'm starting to get real feelings of like LG's uh, modular line. Yeah. Remember that? Like that that you could have used that same sentence for that modular line with this with with this line. So I like that LG still has a wacky corner in the office, although everyone works from home. But um, uh, that is doing this sort of weird stuff and trying to figure out ways that you can un you can explore unexplored usability experiences. It's like the Star Trek uh, Enterprise of uh, Android phones. Um, all right, so <laughs> the, the specs on this is a uh, it's got a 6.8 inch front display. It swivels 90 degrees to landscape mode, revealing a secondary 3.9 inch display underneath it. Oh, it's it's really kind of wonderful when you think about it. Uh, you can <laughs> you can run run apps on both screens simultaneously. Um, they've, it's all based on this hinge mechanism that was tested over two hundred thousand rotations for five years. So basically, that's five years at a hundred swivels a day. Which I wonder how many times you would actually swivel per day. That's an interesting question. But I guess they assumed a hundred. So there it is. Um, it has a thirty-two megapixel pop-up selfie camera. Uh, and if you oh, there if you, you go, Ron. There's your pop-up selfie camera. I do love a good pop-up camera. There it is. Um, and if you feel like you have to have this, uh, you better be a Verizon customer because it's going to be on Verizon first and then AT&T uh, later this fall. Uh, no U.S. pricing yet, but in Europe, the pricing is around uh, 1,099 euros. So you can do the math and figure out uh, what that would be in dollars, uh, which we can do right now if we want, um, just to give some sort of sense of to USD. Thank you, Google. That would be about 1,300 USD. So essentially, okay. you could get you could get the uh, Microsoft Surface Duo or the LG Wing, give or take a hundred bucks. Uh, that's kind of the world that we're in right now. Who knows if it they're going to keep it at that that price, or if it'll be a little cheaper, or maybe it's subsidized through Verizon or whatnot. But listen, 
No one will have a phone that looks like your phone if you get the LG Wing. I'll tell you that right now. That's true. Uh, the yes. device in your yeah, pocket, one hundred. Yeah, would be kind of be uh, would, would would definitely be an eye catcher. Anyone that saw you pull this out of your pocket and flip that to the side is probably asking you, "Wait a minute, what's going on there?" I think it's interesting that there they have more devices of this category coming out. I imagine they don't all do the wing thing. So I'm curious to see what else uh, LG comes up with. And I'm so happy you mentioned the um, the modular LG devices. Were those friends? Was that what it was? Yes, was the it? LG uh, friends. The LG friends. The I totally friends. forgot about that. Oh, my God. <laughs> the LG. Yeah, the G5. <laughs> yes, the G5, like back in 2016. Oh, man. Bef I before love they modular the phones. Yeah. They just did not. They did yes, not yes. Uh, live up to their promises, I suppose. It was or literally maybe they were was, too soon. It was. I was gonna say it was less than a year. Like they had. I'm, I'm, I did a quick search, and I'm here. You know, an Engadget article on February 2016 that says LG's modular G5 is the most daring flagship phone ever. And then January 4th, 2017, LG is abandoning the modular smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, never mind. We've heard that everybody's moving in the direction of foldables, and boy, do we have an interesting idea. It's called yeah. the wing. <laughs> oh, so, okay. And then you also mentioned that this is $1,300 if you do the translation. Um, that's about the same as the device that you're going to talk about, Flo, which is also in the same price category as the device that Leo brought on earlier. So it really seems like this is this is just like the price category for foldables right now. Is it? <laughs> really, is it? I mean, Who is setting the precedent for this? Because I am certainly not setting the pre. I didn't ask for the precedent to be set there. I think that that's yeah. just a tiny bit too high for what we're getting. Uh, and if we're moving on, we're moving on to talking about the Motorola Razr. Because that is a new thing that is getting a little bit of airtime, I guess. But you're going to have to wait quite a bit for it before you can see what Motorola is doing next. So the Razer is making a comeback from its comeback <laughs> from February. So, sorry, I got that wrong, actually. We don't have to wait till February. Um, it's coming soon. So this time, some of the specs have been updated uh, and the price has dropped. But as we discussed, the price is still kind of high. The Motorola Razer 5G is now $1,399, though it was $1,499. So you're getting it for $100 less. Some of the sharp edges have been replaced with the curvy glass. There's a redesigned hinge to give it more of that traditional razor snap when closed because, again, really appealing to the nostalgia of people hanging up on other people. I know that that's there. There have been some changes to the peak display on the outside to include things like favorite apps, uh, the ability to reply to text, the ability to reply to notifications, and the ability to use Google Assistant. So all nice, usable things put in there. This uh, reprise has the Snapdragon 765G inside with the 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. So not paltry, pretty good in, in that sense at least. A larger 2800 milliamp battery, which I'm laughing a little bit. It's up from 2500 milliamps. In my personal opinion, I don't know that that's enough at all for the phones that we're powering these days, but I suppose that's uh, a rant for another day. 5G support, but no millimeter wave connectivity, and it ships with Android 10 outside of the box. And you, we should note that Motorola is selling the Razer they announced last February for $999 on its website. So if you would like to get something first gen, First gen from the reprise, that is. Then you can go yeah. to Motorola.com and you can buy that $1,000 razor and see if it's something that you want. I will say that I have heard some buzz about this, as I mentioned previously, and uh, it's not looking too good for this second time around either. Really? So what are you hearing about this? Because I, I feel like some of the stuff that I've read about it anyways, is people are like... Wow, they really kind of addressed the things they got the wrong the first time. Kind of similar to what we heard about the 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 fold, uh, now the Z fold, where I was like, all right, the second gen is what the first gen should have been. What are you hearing about this? That that's admittedly like, you know, nothing super specific. Just I think a lot of groans from the audience at this point. Oh, just, you know what like I mean? Really? Just because it's 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 a weird time to kind of like do this reprise at the end of the year after we kind of already had a. That's true. I don't know. I, I don't know if I want to say a flip flop, 
but you know. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, that's I think good. you should say it. I think you should say it. I think you should, I think say, you should it. say it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't it's a think, bit of a flip flown flop. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if it's a flip flown flop yet. I don't know. I'm not willing to. It's, to, to, it's hard to, to say to- anything this year for sure. Like even when we were talking earlier to Leo about the duo, we were talking about like, how do we think this is going to perform? I feel like 2020 all bets are off. Maybe we should just kind of like put it aside for now and just look at these products as what could be down the line. Because I feel like everything that is launched within this category of phones is, as we were talking earlier, uh, a fetish device. We're kind of just looking at it. What could be? We really want to fantasize and kind of, you know, get into the idealism of it. But it's not quite something that has materialized just yet. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the thing is, I, th- I feel like a lot of a lot of these R and D departments are testing the market for their approaches, and the dust just had. I mean. I recognize that five minutes earlier I, we were talking about modular phones, which I love, and it didn't last a year at LG. But <laughs> but I, I have to believe that the foldable is gonna, the price is gonna come down on all the hardware aspect of it, and yeah. you're gonna see a you're gonna see a sub eight hundred dollar foldable that is a viable phone. And right now they need to do they need to do this to a get consumer reaction, but also to get economies of scale down yep. and get consumers you know kind of familiar with it. And um, you know, and I, I I gotta believe foldable is gonna be way more prevalent in two years than we like to joke about it. So, yeah, just me. Yeah, it's my very, very well could be. And we've seen the different waves of this happen throughout the years that we've been doing this show where, you know, at first it's an oddity. And then suddenly two years down the line, looking back, you're like, oh, well, actually, that's like in every phone now. It's kind of crazy. Uh, I think I think really the larger form factor is, is the one that comes to mind, whereas early on in Android, it really seemed like large phones were laughable. And I was like, well, why yeah. would I want a phone that big? Like smartphones should, you know, should be this, should be that, but they should not be a, a giant brick. And then that became the norm. And then you look back and you're like, oh, well, that's that's funny. <laughs> funny yeah. that we got this <laughs> wrong. Maybe that will be the case with foldables. Um, I don't know. I don't know if a couple of years is enough time for that to be the case, but uh, certainly we'll see. Um, hmm. Okay. Thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars for specs that are kind of like. Okay, pretty pretty good. I mean, the 765G is what we expect to be in the Pixel 5. I doubt the Pixel yeah. 5 is going to be this expensive. But I don't know, just for, for comparison's sake, uh, interesting to think about that, you know, in, in that way, in that capacity. It's the same. So there you go. There you All go. right. Let's, uh, let's jump into some app news. Burk! <laughs> angry at this. <laughs> I wasn't actually angry. You just I barked was. Burke's name. <laughs> Burke. <Just> full force. <laughs> Thank you, Burke. Um, no, I'm just, I'm just upset at this story. That's what it is, and I'm sorry. I didn't mean to shoot the messenger, Burke. I realize you're just pushing buttons on a TriCaster. I didn't mean to to uh, throw my anger and hostility your I was way. a little slow on the queue. Oh, let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so just last week, Google Play Music began. It's, it's dismantling. We n- already know that Google Play Music is done this fall. Yeah. And we're, we're kind of in the fall more, mostly at this point um, or nearly. So assistant devices are now defaulting to YouTube Music, and they say uh, as much instead of Google Play Music. So if you have your default set to Google Play Music, is it switching over to YouTube Music now, Ron? No. Is that so, what's happening? so literally, literally, what happened? This okay? Oh my God, we are opening a can of worms. So <laughs> okay, here we go. Because I have a YouTube Music qualm, but anyway, so I have a Google Play. I have a whatever. Blah, blah. I have a the home device with the screen. And I have the home device without the screen. I've got the the screen is in the kitchen. The 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 air freshener is in the in the bedroom. Um, I went to to one of the devices. I forget which one. And I said, okay, go, yeah, okay, G, play, you know, uh, Hi Ho by the Dwarf Chorus from Snow White because my son likes that. Um, <laughs> and before it started playing, uh, is like. Okay, playing Hi Ho by the Dwarf Chorus on YouTube Music. By the way, your default music app is now YouTube Music, and then just play the song. No. So the so the, the the first song that triggered it 
it communicated it to you and it was just like, oh, by the way, here you go. That's it. Um, keep in mind that this was about after two weeks of every time I turn the lights on and off, it telling me that Samsung smart things was changing on September 8th and I had to go do something, um, <laughs> which was like, and by the way, unlike the YouTube music change, it told me every time I used the Google home about the Samsung smart things thing as, as if I didn't hear it the first time. Right. And there was no way to be like, okay, stop telling me that. But still I digress. So now YouTube music is our default one. So I'm like, fine, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to embrace it. We actually, um, uh, we went out the, this weekend, uh, this past weekend, we drove out to see some family and, uh, you know, I, I rented a car and I Bluetooth paired it. I'm like, I'm going to use YouTube music. And so we use YouTube music and it was fine. I looked up albums, played the songs hmm. I want to hear. I never ran into a problem. I'm like, all right, maybe this isn't so bad. And then the other day I said, okay, okay, G on the YouTube, with, on the, on the, uh, on the Google home with the screen. Uh, I, I had used the word linger in a conversation. So I said, okay, play the song linger by the cranberries. All right. And here's the problem. It played the freaking music video. Mm. Not, yeah. I just wanted, I wanted the song. Now, I want to see the album cover, maybe some lyrics, you know, that sort of thing. But it played the stupid music video because it's on YouTube and that's not what Wait. I wanted. Because, like in so the dash on the, in the screen. No, no, no. This is what I was back home. Yeah, I, I, when I was yeah, whatever the the Google Home, what okay. is it called? The Google Home display, smart display, Nest yeah, Hub, so. Nest whatever. Yeah, smart display. So it, so in the instance of using YouTube Music now with the screen, I don't I don't know if there's some way to say just play me songs versus play me videos. I don't want to see videos because with two twins running around, they see motion on a screen, they stop mm -hmm. and they're just watching it like it's TV. When I just want to play a song. So if I'm going to play the song from Snow White, I don't want them to play the scene from Snow White because that's on YouTube. I want to play the song from the soundtrack. And this is why YouTube music is inherently flawed. So mm -hmm. there you go. Mm -hmm. I feel uh, like you're preaching still, to the choir right now, Ron. And I still have not sorted out all my subscriptions and all that stuff yet. It's just sitting there. There's literally – right now I'm looking at my email. There are 21 messages and they're all from Google Play and YouTube Music and YouTube that are all the same subject line. <laughs> Jeez. I, <laughs> they yeah, really so, – at least they're consistent. And, it's you know. a problem. It's definitely a problem. Well, yeah, they're, so. they're consistent and they don't let up, which is why you were notified every single time with that light. Because I can see how they, what their thinking was. Well, if this dies before he makes the change, then he's going to blame us when it's not working anymore. So we got to make sure that he makes yep. this change. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. It is uh, annoying. So, I, wah, so was wah. I the only one – was I the only one who got it or did you guys get that message as well with yours? I got it. I got that I message. Did, yeah. I did not get that message only because I had already switched over to YouTube music as the default because uh, I have been continually running into confusing issues where the home for my kids and for me, it, like it won't know what to play where. So it's like play the album Hamilton. Uh, I'm playing it. On, uh, I'll play, sure, I'll play the album Hamilton on Google Play Music. Sorry, that playlist is empty. Uh, what does that mean? Okay, play the album Hamilton on YouTube Music, and then it plays like some weird random thing. It's like no, that's not the album Hamilton. Play we're, the we're original also soundtrack Hamilton with... on YouTube Music, and and so at some point I was like, yeah. all right, so it's trying to figure out what I want and from where. I if the movement is over to YouTube Music, I'm just gonna set it for that and see if it clears clears the situation, and it really hasn't. I'm, I'm so frustrated with it. It sucks. It's just uh, what I feel like. Part of what we're describing, yes, is a very big inherent problem with YouTube music and Google Play music and how that's going to live side by side. It's also a problem with the assistant and just the way it's going yeah. to have to parse between mm -hmm. these different commands. And yeah. assistant needs to become a little more sophisticated than it is now. And it's already the most, I would argue, the most sophisticated of the bunch that exist. But within Google, it needs to become a little more sophisticated to understand when Ron is asking for music versus when Ron is asking for video. Um, so now say, I, and I same will, thing, I, yeah. I will say I did not do the research because I just want things to work. And I yeah. did just go, I did just Google YouTube music. Don't show video. And the first result is the support.google.com choose between song and video mode. 
And it says with a YouTube music mu- music premium membership, you can choose whether to listen to your music or enjoy the music video experience YouTube music. So it is a setting that I just have not said. So um, it, apparently it's on Android. It should be off on, by on the Android, default, in my opinion. Android, you go, I don't know. You go, into, Whatever. You, go into set it, you go into settings and you switch don't play music videos to the on position. So now I need to test that if that will still carry Super through to Google friendly. Home. Yeah, so user-friendly. The thing is, is that what what the, here's the here's my whole issue with it, is that Google has the pieces on the table, yeah, the puzzle pieces there, right? And it's a hundred puzzle piece, and they've got like seventy five pieces, and it's that yep. last twenty five piece that really makes it sing. And re- oh, sorry, I didn't mean to do that, but uh, the la- it's the last twenty five percent that that is that last mile where things can be in the future. It can be a Star Trek world where we just say play the song and it plays it. And it's that last bit that is the hardest bit. And I feel like they're not doing the work to get there. I just I just get frustrated because it used to work. (laughs) It (laughs) used to work exactly as it needed to. And I and I would be the first person to tell someone, oh, my God, it's amazing. I can my kids are using it. You know, I've got a four year old daughter and she knows how to cue up a song on, on the on the Google Home. And now, like, it's frustration all around. And it's just like. The it's the usual. It's the norm to be frustrated trying to get our Google oh, Home to do something that used to be so easy, and ugh, I, it just I, sucks. I just I just switched the uh, the setting, and then I got a "How satisfied are you with with YouTube music?" <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Go on. Go on. Be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but yeah. Some so good I just news. I, so I just I just said that I just don't know if it's going to affect the Home app, so I need to figure yeah. that out. That works because yeah. that's the problem. So on your smart display, you mean? Yeah, on the smart display. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe there's a setting on there. I don't know. I don't have a smart display primarily for that reason. I knew that if I brought a smart display in this house, that it would become a YouTube vector. And I was like, you know what? Like, I'm not even I, gonna go there. I, I will say, to. I will say that I for a moment I almost went to Twitter and I had it half written where I said, at made by Google and Google Nest. How do I switch back to Google Play Music? But I, I didn't, I didn't because I didn't want to be that person and troll them. But yeah, I thought, I thought about it. I thought about it. So, so let's end this on on a good note, at least. Some good news about YouTube Music: a nine to five Google APK teardown actually hints that YouTube Music is likely going to allow for the casting of your music library for free, like you've been able to do with Google Play Music. Right now, if you try, if you are a free user of YouTube music and you try and cast your uploaded library, um, you are not able to cast that to your smart speakers from what I understand. Um, And apparently there's hints inside the APK teardown that point to them activating this feature at some point. So at least there's that. Some good news anyway. (sighs) All right. Let's take a break. Let's take a break from all that YouTube music. Although if you have YouTube music, you could probably use uh, these Raycons. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by Raycon. When listening to podcasts, you need a good set of uh, a good good premium wireless earbuds to do that. And that's why you need to check out Raycon. Uh, Raycon's newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds are their best ones yet. You get six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, a more compact design. They have a nice noise isolating fit. Raycon earbuds are also stylish and discreet. So, you know, of course, you don't have dangling wires hanging down out of your ears or any stems like uh, another earphone that we talked about earlier in the show. The company was actually co founded by Ray J and celebrities uh, like Snoop Dogg, Brandy, uh, Mike Tyson, J.R. Smith, a whole bunch of people in on, on, uh, on the Raycons. They are obsessed with their products. And it really shows. You give them a try. Raycon has a 45-day free return policy. So you can actually make sure that they're the pair of wireless earbuds for you. You can get them and try them yourself. Um, I I think probably the thing that I love most about them is just how light and kind of forget that you're wearing them because they're so light. They fit in there. They're really comfortable. And they kind of disappear. Yet the sound, you know, is is excellent uh, along with that. So it's really great. You you get a pair of bad wireless earbuds and you can't help but feel them the entire time that you're listening to whatever you're listening to. That's not the case with Raycons. Uh, for a limited time, get 15% off your order 
at buyraycon.com slash Android. That's buyraycon.com slash Android, and you'll get a special 15% discount on Raycon wireless earbuds. So make sure and check it out now while the deal's running. That's buyraycon.com slash Android. And we thank them for their support of All About Android and the Twit Network. All right, it's email time. I'll kick it off. Triple A at twit.tv, by the way, if you want to send us an email, or 347 show AAA if you like to do the old fashioned leave us a voicemail thing. Uh, Victor writes in, not Victor from the behind the scenes of this show. As far as I know, Victor, correct me if, if I'm wrong. What if it, what if it said, was? I know, he's like, look, I don't know how to reach you anymore, Jason. This is how yeah. I reach you. This is, this is the only way I can get you to notice me. <laughs> We love you, Victor. Uh, and we love you for writing in, Victor. Uh, the other Victor says, just a quick note to let you know why Google may have removed cloud printing from Chrome and Android. The new-ish alliance called Mopria will be built into Android 11 going forward and is also part of Windows 10 as well. This means there is no need to have remote printing anymore. No drivers, no apps. Android and Chrome and printers and scanners support this natively. It also supports scanning directly to the device, no driver either. Over 120 million printers and scanners already support this. And he says you can you can look at the list at the Mopria website. Um, I was not aware of this. Some, somehow this news like totally escaped me. I remember hearing something, and we may have even talked about it on the show, uh, back when they announced that uh, Google Cloud Print was going away. Um, but I still use Google Cloud Print to print from my Android device. And I went searching on the device to see if there was like a share to print option, which, you know, this press release that I found on businesswire.com uh, mentioned something about that. I was like, OK, so is it in the share menu? That's not quite as seamless as just hitting the print button and going from there. I can't find it, but apparently soon uh, Cloud Print is going away for good. I think by the end of this year in December, it's done. And supposedly, Mopria is going to be the alternative for that. So I'm curious to know how it'll be implemented and how it'll show up on our devices. But um, fascinating. Good. Did, I feel like we yeah. we talked about cl cloud print going away, and we yeah, were shocked by it. But th this makes more sense. So. Yeah. Huh. So I mean, it would be weird if there was no way to print. So obviously, they right. would they would do something. And if this is such a widely supported standard, this sounds great. I just want to see how it impl how it's implemented. And right now, I can't find that. All when I try and print, it just pulls up Google Cloud Print still because the service still works for me. So, anyways, maybe maybe someone out there knows. Triple A at twit.tv. Let us know. All right, Flo, you got the next one. I've got the next one. Now, this comes from Robert R, which is great because Robert can just sign his name as RR. Like I do. Um, yeah. I, sorry. I'm sorry, Robert. Thank you for writing in. <laughs> um, I've been a longtime viewer ever since I dove into the Android pool with the Nexus S, excuse me, 6. Darn it. Go. And I just ruined what was going to be my joke about that, which is I hope we didn't go into the pool with the Nexus 6 because they were not IP rated back then. Thank you. Man. You're on fire. <laughs> this is, this Since is then, great. I have been enjoying the freedom of Android. That's right. That is until recently. I have started to notice that app updates seem to be broken. I have 15 to 30 updates daily. Once it was as bad as 50 at one time. I am currently on a Samsung Note 10 Plus and have auto up app update off. And I'm on Android 10. Sorry, that was hard to read. Then today, I noticed an app had not been updated, but a new version was available on the company's website. After trying to force an update through the Play Store, I ended up sideloading it. What is the point of receiving huge waves of updates if ones I want are missed? Are the amount of app updates I'm getting normal? Should I just be thankful that I can sideload apps if needed? Hope this finds you well. Keep up the awesome work. P.S. I am attaching photos that are nine days apart showing the updates. All right, let's see these photos. Let's let's get some of this yeah. evidence in because I'd like to see what this looks like. I mean, I mean, if you if you leave your auto update off, yeah, you're going to accumulate updates. And then when you go in there, there's going to be a ton of them. I don't know. That's why yeah, I, I don't see how, that, that, how, <laughs> how, how is that surprising. Yeah, <laughs> maybe maybe that's maybe that's it. Maybe auto update is off and that's why. This annoyance is happening, I would imagine. Yeah, like part of me wonders if I'm if I'm misunderstanding the email, but I mean, yeah, I mean, 
Yes. If you leave auto update off and you don't go in there for a couple of days or even a day. So, and it also really depends on how many apps you have installed on your device. If you have like 120 apps installed on your device, all those developers are doing updates. Like, yeah, you're going to get a lot of updates. It's going to happen. Um, I just keep auto update on. And I can I never see have to it says auto it. updates turned off. Very, It's very blurry, but it's off. Yeah, yeah. I see well, yeah, it. And, and he specifies that he keeps it off. So... I mean, I I don't know. I guess I have a hard time understanding what the problem is. Um, I, although I do recognize, like, it is frustrating to have an app that on the site there's a new version of the app and it's not in the Play Store. That I mean, I don't know the story there. The developer could not have updated it on the Play Store and maybe updated it on the site first. I, I don't really know. Um, I don't know if it's a matter of the developer putting it on the Play Store and then the Play Store was just so slow to push out the update. It could be. Uh, it's just kind of hard to know. So. You can go to the Play Store app, tap on the menu icon, which is little uh, three bars, go to My Apps and Games, and uh, then tap on More, and then you can enable auto-update for individual apps if there are any apps in there that you just never oh. want to think about. Um, another well, that's, thing that's to nice. kind of... Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is remember that you can set up Android so that when you plug it in at night to charge, it will automatically start updating those apps in the background. So you don't have to wait about battery drain and you know that the phone will take care of it for you when it's in that sort of reset, you know, charge up mode. I think um, the best way to get to that is go to your settings menu and if you have a search bar, look for auto update apps and you'll be able to find that in the settings. Um, but I mean, I understand this annoyance because when I turn on, you know, the Samsung tablet that I leave dormant somewhere in this house, I want those apps updated and I'll go into the play store and it's like, you, you got to wait for a while. You, you got to yeah. wait for all those apps to just catch up. Sometimes they get updated like once every other week or something just because of bug fixes, little things like that, especially if it's from a very, uh, prominent publisher. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's maybe it's just maybe it's just a down, you know, just a, an annoyance of having apps living in a nap world. But I do, uh, I do also think that you know, pointing out that you can sideload the apps when you need to that, that is a perk of Android. So, and you, you it's benefited true. from it. So there's it's that. It's true. I love that. <laughs> That's what I love. Sunny days on Android. Indeed. All right. Thank you, Robert. All right. All right, so I have honored to share with you not only a very long email, but the email of the week. Ta -da! Ta -da! Oh, no. uh, huzzah. And uh, this week's emailer of the week is Tom from Littleton, Colorado, who writes in and says, all right, everybody get cozy as we go through this. Uh, after updating to Android 11, I was frustrated at first, regard, uh, at first regarding screenshot functionality, given it disappeared from the power button option. I found the following three options that all work slightly differently. All right, so just to, to set the stage, you used to hold, long press the power button, and there was an, uh, you can hit screenshot and take a screenshot that way, which was much better than the previous volume down power button combo, which I never was very good at. But now that's the power button's gone. Here are the three options that Tom shares. The screenshot feature has moved to the recent apps list. By pressing the square button or if using gesture navigation, pull up from the bottom of the screen. Simply pull up recents and scroll right to the app, uh, right to the app you want a screenshot of, then touch screenshot at bottom of the screen. The nice thing about this method, method is it gives you an image of the app screen only. You don't get the phone status icons from across the top of the phone, which is very interesting, an app-based screenshot, which is kind of cool. Um, so that's option number one. Option number two is to activate the assistant and say, take screenshot. The only, th only weird thing about this is that it appears you have to share your screenshot with an app. I don't see a way to save the screenshot to the phone other than using the, uh, when using the Google Assistant. If you share to photos, you could download from photos to the phone. This method gives you the entire screen, including status icons across the top. You have to use this method or the one below if the shot you're taking isn't of a specific app. For example, if you want to take a screenshot of your notifications or whatnot. And finally, the third way is to press both, and here it is, the volume down key and power key at the same time as in previous versions of Android. This will take an image of the entire screen, including a status area across the top, and save to your phone. Uh, great show. Thank you, Tom. And thank you for that very detailed list of how to take screenshots on Android 11. And I'll be honest, 
while I like the idea of moving to the recent apps and taking an app based screenshot, I kind of miss holding the power button and being able to do it from that menu. That seems wacky. Jason, what do you think? Uh, I never used screenshot by holding down the power button and doing it from the power. What? Button. I don't think I've Damn. ever used it that way. What? Yeah. How, how did you do no. it then? I held did down the, do the power button and the volume down at the same time. That's mm -hmm. how I've always done it. Or that's how I've done it for a long time. Yeah. Power and volume down at the same time just takes my problem. And, my problem is, is because I always end up like it's just I, the volume buttons and the power buttons are never the same on each phone. And yeah. it's always yeah. awkward and it's all, you know, uh, and Especially I'll be on honest one with you. Plus. On the OnePlus, I take more inadvertent screenshots with volume down and power button by accident because I grab the phone by, and press both buttons at the same time by accident than I ever use mm -hmm. it uh, consciously. I but I know. love whole, long pressing the power button and then tapping screenshot is fantastic. So, yep, yeah, yeah, never did it from the power menu, so uh, I'm not missing that. But I think this is, I think this was just a really nice comprehensive look at the many different ways, and it actually also tied in because there was another emailer, and I'm sorry I forgot your name, uh, who asked this question, like, how do you take screenshots in Android 11? I should have set it up with this, but this email was long enough that I figured this would be good. Um, so yeah, now you have three different ways you can take a screenshot with Android 11. Not bad at all. That is the email of the week. And just a quick postscript, if anybody's curious, uh, Burke did both. Uh, he got used to the power memo screenshot. So there it yeah. is. That's what Burke did. So, yep. Thank you, Burke. Thank you, Ron. Thank, <laughs> thank you, you Burke. Somebody. Thank you, Burke, from thank the peanut gallery. Love it. <laughs> and thank you, Leo, for coming on at the top of the show to yeah, share his awesome. thoughts Great. at the Surface Duo. I was trying to think of the last time we had Leo on the show. And we had him on for like a New Year's episode years ago, right? Right? It was it like was... the last episode of the, the year. And I did a search in the doc and I couldn't find him. We didn't include I do remember there was one at the end of the year. Um, yes. I don't know what year it was, though. Yeah, so, it's weird. Oh well. Like, usually we have this stuff in our schedule page, but um, don't. So I could, I could search through. But anyways, it's been years. So <laughs> it was nice to have Leo back on. Thank you for t uh, taking your time at the end of a long day to join us, Leo, and to share your thoughts there. Uh, and also thanks to you, Flo, for always keeping it real about your 90210 socks. Um, <laughs> tell us what you want people to know. Um, I want you to know that you can go to florenceion.com if you need any information about me, uh, things I'm working on, little bits and pieces here and there, links to my social media, you can go there. Also, if you go to flowrights.tech, it'll take you straight to all the recent work that I've posted. So I've started updating it on my page, uh, which is like the latest links, as I mentioned, latest stuff you can read is my big mechanical keyboard roundup at Gizmodo. So check that out when you get a chance. Thank you guys for having me today. Nice. Good work, Flo. <laughs> thank you for joining. And thank you to Ron as well over on the East Coast. What you want to talk about? Always my pleasure to be here. Uh, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at RonXO. And as I talked about last week and the week before, I'm happy to announce, go check out uh, the website scorbit.io. That's S-C-O-R-B-I-T dot I-O, um, where you can find all about our uh, connected pinball uh, system that we've built. Uh, it is a piece of hardware. Uh, we've de designed a piece of hardware that can go in p inside pinball machines to connect them to the internet. But we also have a mobile app on Android and iOS uh, that allows you to keep track of your scores and find places to play pinball and things like that. So go to scorebit.io, check it out. Uh, we've been live for a couple weeks now. We're, we've we've shipped units to people. They put it in their pinball machines. They like it. It's really exciting. Gotten some great feedback. A lot of you have written in um, uh, a couple. Someone found some typos on the website, which I appreciate. Um, <laughs> and uh, no, but I've heard from the all about Android listeners who are interested in this. And I thank everybody for getting in touch and all the kind words. Um, and yeah, it's fun. It's, it's, it's super exciting. So it is exciting. I love it. I love seeing it progress. And last week was a big moment, Ron. It was. It was. So, no. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. Uh, big you. thanks to Victor as well as Burke, both helping behind the scenes to bring you this show in all of its glory. Thank you, Burke and Victor. Appreciate you. Um, 
As for me, twit.tv slash HOA. If you like Android, which I think you do because you watch or listen to this show, then you will probably like hands on Android. Last week's episode, which is live right now, is a review of Android 11. Uh, so I go into some pretty deep detail on it. You can check that out, twit.tv slash HOA. The episode that I'm working on for this Thursday is uh, taking a look at the new power control, the power menu control, like device control section of the Android 11 power menu and how you can customize it beyond what Google gives you the, the capabilities to do. So you get a little nerdy with Tasker and you can do some pretty cool stuff in there. So twit.tv slash HOA. Don't forget twit.tv slash store. And there you can find all about Android shirts in all different colors and, you know, masks and all sorts of uh, twit merchandise can be found there. Uh, and the shirts just look really great. No matter which color you pick, it's the right color. So twit.tv slash store. Don't forget to wear a mask. It saves lives when you do. And we appreciate that. And thanks to uh, you for watching and listening. Uh, this is the end of the episode. We publish every Tuesday evening at twit.tv slash AAA. So thank you for spending time with us each and every week. We'll see you next time on All About Android. Bye, everybody. Bye. So long. Want more Twit? Check out Tech News Weekly, twit.tv slash TNW. Tech News Weekly is a show where Jason Howell and I bring the latest and greatest interviews to you from the people making and breaking the tech news. Twit.tv slash TNW.